How are you going? Welcome to Down Big House Sports. We are going to be discussing all 17 NRL clubs and ranking them based on their organization, based on how likely players are wanting to go there, the success that they've had, or comparably to the lack of success. Do they work the salary cap well? Yes, we will be including that one there. So just overall, how the club is. Not their performance is necessarily on the field, but just in general, what that organization looks like from a fan's perspective. And we'll be going through the five categories here, which is elite quality, they get by, struggle street, and couldn't organize a chook raffle. Now, all five of these, there will be at least one club in each of them, right? I will make sure of that. You guys know the tier makers that are coming back very soon. I think in a couple of weeks is our first one. Maybe two weeks will be our first uh, tier rankings with the positional players. So we go through every single player in every single position and rank them in their position amongst the other players. So it's a really good video series, that one. We do that every single year with other content creators. Can't wait for that. And it's similar to this. So I think we should just get started here, guys. Obviously, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you are new around here. We're going absolutely daily. We've been every day so far this year. So by the time we've been one week, to be completely honest with you, but it has been for weeks, so let's get into it. First up, we have the Brisbane of the Bronco, the Brisbane Broncos here. Now, look, I'm going to be unbiased in this video, guys. I'll, I'll, I'll straight up tell you, you guys know I love my Titans, don't like the Broncos, but I'll be honest with you here and straight up say that the Broncos are elite. They are there or thereabouts. They're either there or, or, or the very top of quality. They did win a spoon very recently. But with that being said, they were able to turn that spoon around into a grand final appearance within a couple of years. So it does show that this team does still have that, that kind of kick about them, but they have not won a premiership since the Titans been in the comp since 2000. And their last premiership was 2006, the Titans came in 2007, right? So, you know, it has been a long-standing period of unsuccess here for a very successful club. Before, you know, 2006, they were winning premiership to here, premiership there, premiership everywhere. They're one of the most successful teams in the competition. So, look, I think the players want to go there. They're lucky enough to be in a city like Brisbane, you know, rather than a place like Canberra, for example. You know, the Broncos do have, you know, guys at the top who know what they're doing, right? And I, I would say that overall, the Broncos probably are one of the more elite organizations of the lot, and they do get quite a lot of support from some big time organizations too. So yeah, look, I think that the Broncos, they're not gonna be at the top of the table. They won't be the top, but they are definitely probably in that elite section for mine. All right, we go to the Canterbury Bulldogs now. This is a difficult one because in the last 10 years, they've made two grand finals, 2012, 2014. Uh, also won the spoon recently. Uh, have been known as the dogs of war in the past. Um, I, they're starting to sign a lot of players now. So it shows that, I guess, Gus Gould is doing a good job. The way the organization is, is fine. Uh, but I also don't know if I can say it's quality at the moment because it hasn't translated into what the organization is demanding the fans believe, if you know what I'm saying. So look, they've got the cash to throw around, I guess. And... You know, players do want to go there, which means that the organization knows how to talk to the players. They know how to kind of build their club up and show this is why you want to be here. Uh, they've got a great fan base there uh, who do trust in their organization. I will still probably put them at the top of they get by. I will, I know, you know what, they'll probably be at the bottom of they get by. Because again, we haven't seen, we see stints. It's all stints with the dogs which means that they do, I guess, know how to rebuild, I would say. The Dogs are a well-known club for knowing how to rebuild. But when they hit rock bottom, they hit rock bottom. Like, theirs is a clear and definitive rock bottom. That was one of the worst teams the other year, right? So, I would say that they're in the they get by. A lot of people will put them in the couldn't organize a chook raffle, and a lot of people will put them in a struggle street. But that's looking at the club itself. That's not looking at how, I guess, the organization does get by throughout. All right, now we move into the Cronulla Sharks, a team that's won one premiership in uh, what, 58 years now, 57, 58 years now, uh, but they did win it in 2016. The Sharks have been a really weird team over time. Uh, I really don't know how to explain Cronulla. You know, I, I know that they've got obviously a lot of financial benefits happening around the stadium. Uh, their stadium is not great at the moment at all, but you know, they've got a lot of financial benefits that I guess they've built into the club. So that is a positive there. The negative is that when it comes to on the field, 
I never really see it from the Sharkies. Look at them right now. They've got a great team, but the club's just not there. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're just... They're not really a major threat when they should be a major threat. Now, there's a lot of things that go into that, but we need to see more from Fitzgibbon. But overall... You know, we, it, this could be a good year for the Sharkies, in my personal opinion. They need it to be a good year for the Sharkies. And I guess it will come down to if everything within the organization is working, right? They are putting things into place for the future. I will put them definitely above the doggies. Um, I, I, it's between low end quality and they get by. I'll probably put the top of they get by. Reason being is that for the most part of their history they've been unsuccessful that doesn't mean they haven't had a grand final here or there back against manly and whatnot uh, and then obviously that 2016 one but i think they get by they, they they get by for the most part all right let's move down to the dolphins can't really say too much about the dolphins here because they've only been in the competition for one year and like i guess you can go via the q cup the queensland cup and whatnot I'll, i'm just gonna have to put him straight like here um but i guess you can put him no, I'll put them there. Um, I, I don't think... No, you know what? We're going to add in a category here. We're going to add a row below. And that row will be... Um, undefined. Not yet... Def not yet seen. We'll go not yet seen. And they'll put Dolphins there. Um, you know, good on for getting into the NRL. Let me just make sure this is actually seen on there. Yeah. Uh, good on them for getting into the NRL. But at the end of the day, man... Um, we've got nothing to really base it off in regards to the professional national rugby league, right? So, all right, we're moving now into my team, the Gold Coast Titans, and uh, I'm going to be honest with this one. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be sharp honest with you. Uh, it's going to probably be Struggle Street. Um, I I know people in this organization, you know, I know they work hard, um, but at the end of the day, we've had a Struggle Street existence. Um, I, I would say that if it wasn't for the Desi Hasler inclusion, and the promise that we have going into the future, the belief we have as a club right now, uh, the ability to withhold big news stories from the media and announce it ourselves before they know about it. A lot of people in the club didn't even know about the Justin Holbrook, Tessie Hasler stuff, right? So um, I think that's a positive because previously I would have probably put them in couldn't organize a truck raffle. I would have. And I love this club, right? And you guys know that. I'm at every single game I'm away. Uh, and again, know these people. Um, but I need to see the proof. I believe in Stevie Mitchell, I believe in Dennis Watt, I believe in how this, this club is being run now, uh, but we've gone through a long unsuccessful tenure where there's not been much to, to kind of give me evidence of anything above. So previously they would have been down below, couldn't have gone to Took Raffle. I do think they're on the up now, so they'll be in Struggle Street. The Canberra Raiders, weird one man, really, really weird one. I'm probably going to put them into the... I'm probably going to put... I don't, I don't, I don't know. I could easily put them here. I could easily put the Raiders there. But they might be there. I'm gonna put them here. That might be a bit of a. Um... No, they get by, do they? I think technically they get by. No, you know we'll put them there. It wouldn't be controversial. Put them on Chelsea Street. But that's my thought process. You know, one, no one wants to go there, um, which is not necessarily the organisation's fault. But like, make it make a reason for them to want to go there. You know, there's nothing that really kind of benefits you, in my opinion, about Canberra. And besides 2019, they're kind of there. They they couldn't promise so much more. Like they do have so you can you can see they've got so much more there, but it just never really is there. They are on a 28, 29 year streak now as well, mind you. People talk about Parramatta. Raiders are about 29 years without winning a comp as well, fun fact. Yeah, I think that they get by, they do what they need to do, um, but there's nothing spectacular there. I don't think they're awful, um, but they're in a pretty bad streak. They are in a pretty bad streak. All right, we go now to the New Zealand Warriors. You know, if I try to forget about... Oh, no, I'm going to put them in Struggle Street. I'll put them below, above the Titans, so... Uh, they are struggle street, you know, they've they've had what two grand finals. They lost both those grand finals um, Besides 2023 Warriors hadn't done really anything ever um, They're kind of a team that is just never really there. They're never really there. Well, they're there But they're never really there, right? They don't win anything. They've won like a minor premiership 20 or 22 odd years ago once They've been in comp for about 30 years now, obviously About 29 years. I think the same is are they the same as Canberra? I think they're both on 29 years without a comp. 
but at least Kepa have that one prior. Warriors don't have one. I feel like you could actually encourage a lot more if you're the organization here, the Warriors. Like they don't really, I guess they've got Roger Tuivasa-Shek coming back, but they also lost him in the first place. Um, there is a plethora of talent in New Zealand that don't doesn't really kind of evolutionize in rapidly because they go to Union, but it's like, not everyone can play Union, so there is still other talent there that you probably could grab for League and whatnot. I just haven't seen enough of the Warriors organization over time to say that they're, they've done enough really and i think they are in struggle street i think they have been in struggle street uh and i think they've been in a very similar position to the titans in a lot of ways obviously i haven't won a spoon as a club i don't really want anything so i'll put them in struggle street the manly seagulls we're going to put them into quality um they are always competitive uh, for the most part you know every single decade i think they've won a premiership right um 97 against the knights you know a couple in the 2000s in 2006 no, they won 2008, didn't they? Yeah, it was 2008, they didn't win a couple. They won 2008, and then they won 2011 and 13. No, they lost the Roosters there, 2011. Um, they, they always win, and then they've won, obviously, going back. This organization for them, oh, like, if we're going based off 2021, couldn't organize a truck raffle. This current organization, honestly, I'd put them down here. I, I would honestly put the current organization in Struggle Street like, we couldn't organize a truck raffle. To lose Dez Hasler based off of your own stupidity and then blame him and blame, like, it was it was the club's fault. Like, that whole LGBT inclusivity round was the club's fault. It was the organization's fault, right? Will not budge on that. If anyone believes otherwise, you're wrong, right? It is the club's fault for that organization. Uh, but overall, throughout time, Manly are a more quality organization than most um i would not put them in an elite and i think another big reason for that is that fiasco that we saw recently uh but they do know how to organize this club melbourne storm this is going to be a pretty obvious one here they'll go above the broncos as well uh the melbourne storm are elite obviously part of news corp uh always getting some very solid plays from southeast queensland they've obviously had success throughout all of their time uh also if they well they got caught for the salary cap, but also know how to uh, utilize books to win premierships before they get caught with a salary cap. Um, you know, the, the, yeah, this club knows what they're doing. They, they know what they're doing for the most part. They're in a little bit of a kind of precarious situation right as we speak, as they're on the they're teetering on the edge of kind of falling really back down to the pack quite a lot. But for the overall, you know, package that the organization provides, I'm saying that the Melbourne Storm are in elite end. Yeah, I'm very happy with where they are. They're definitely above the Bronx. All right, Newcastle. Uh, I would say Newcastle are very similar to the Dogs in a way. Um, I think that the Knights have a strong fan base. But then again, like when they hit rock bottom, the worst team I've ever witnessed in rugby league history was that Knights team in the 2010s. And they won three wooden spoons in a row. But where do I put them? Because, you know, yes, obviously they had one... Decent, no, no, they've got to go here. No, they've got to go in Struggle Street. You know, if you remove uh, like recency bias, they've just got to go in Struggle Street. Um, they've got to go in Struggle Street. Hmm, I am gonna put them, I'm gonna put them there. I'm going to. Oh, it's, it's either there or there. If you go by, via the premierships previously, I guess that's Knights there, but that was also 24 years ago. Um, not 24. Roughly 20 plus years ago, right? So that's before the Titans even existed. I would say if we're going after that, then the Knights haven't been able to organise a truck raffle, to be honest with you, but they'd be up there in the struggle street. It's just the one year, as in last year, they had a good year. But besides that, it's been massive in the struggle street. I will put it there because for the most part as well, the Knights have actually finished below the Titans. I would say for the most part of the last 10 years, it's kind of probably been back and forth really actually, back and forth. But then again, there's definitely a guaranteed three years. I don't know. It's just the Knights organization doesn't really give me a great deal of, they know what they're doing overall. And for such a strong, passionate city that love their rugby league, I would put them where they are based off of their especially recent history. But that may be controversial. I don't know. Comment below. Let me know in the comment section. Uh, the North Queensland Cowboys, I'd say they get by. I'd say that they get by. Ooh, we'll put them there. I'll put the North Queensland Cowboys there, to be honest with you. 
Uh, they've won, obviously, the one premiership in 2015. They got to the grand final in 2005, but lost the Tigers. Uh, obviously, relied heavily upon Jonathan Thurston. Got the premiership, happy days. Competed for the most part of that, happy days. Uh, haven't really done much since. You know, they they don't really have much fan hate towards their organization. I don't think they believe in Toddy Payton. They believe in the organization overall. Uh, not that they've given them great a great deal of reason to, besides one year in 2022 where they came out of nowhere and absolutely killed it. And 2023 sucked again, and 2021 really, really sucked. Um, they haven't really hit it since Thurston obviously left. So I think that they get by. You know, I think that overall the Cowboys are there. They they get by. Uh, no one really comes for the head of the CEO, is what I'd personally say there. And they spend money when they need to. You don't really see them going out for these big, massive star players, realistically. You don't really see them kind of going out there. They lose a couple of players. They did lose some good players recently, to be fair. I think they get by. I think they're fine. Paramount Eels, you go to straight here. Couldn't organize a truck raffle. You could not organize a truck raffle. I'm sorry, but it's reality. You may think I'm the devil, but I'm sorry, this is the reality of your situation. For such a successful club in the past, if we're talking 1980s, then bingo. But we're not talking the 1980s. We're currently in 2024. Bang. And you haven't won a premiership since. Don't know. Well, they might know. They get, I would say Eels probably understand social media. Most out of clubs. But like, who cares about social media if your club just doesn't know how to do jack shit. I'm sorry, but this isn't just based on premierships, but you've got to weigh in a 38 year, 39 year drought. You do. And they've had a, a good couple of years, but then last year did nothing. You know, they made a grand final, got absolutely whooped in the grand final, but, you know, this team doesn't look like it's being led right. It doesn't feel right. I made a video about this the other day. It doesn't feel right right now. There just isn't enough to get them over the line at the moment. I don't believe in Brad Arthur. I think that, you know, they're too hell-bent on winning with this playing group, and they were awful in the 2010s. This team was competing... Like, they cheated for two spoons. They cheated. They cheated for two spoons. That's madness of a statement. I'm moving on from it. That right there tells you everything you need to know. Pen of Panthers, uh, they now are elite. They now are elite. I will put them now. This is very recency bias. Very recency bias. Until, until recently, they would have been like he I'd say there. I'd say no, they would have been above the Raiders. I would put them there until 2019, right? Uh, but now I'd put them there. The Panthers for a struggle street of a local area, let's say, right? And that's not the insult. I'm just saying, like People from there also say, it may be not the best, I love it, like it's still my place, it's still my home, but maybe not the best comparatively, right? For a struggle of an area to dominate the game like they have, the resources they have, have developed all the way through the system and don't look like slowing down. And I don't know how many players, no, you could get anyone you want there if you had the money based off of the reputation of the club. So I would say the Panthers are elite. I'd say they're above the Broncos right now. I'd say, you know, overall time, Broncos are above them. But right this very second, I'm happy with it. Sassy and Rabbitohs, here's a controversial one for you. Uh, Sassy and Rabbitohs uh, have won one premiership in the last like 60 years. You know, you know what I'm saying? This club has led you a lie. Like, the organization has led you a lie. And I'm sorry to say this to you Rabbitohs fans, but they have. Which is very smart. Very smart by the organization to do this. They're always telling you, always really focusing on most successful club ever. We've won all these premierships. We're the greatest team that ever existed. Whilst it's all technically true, it is technically true. They've only won that one premiership in 2014 that most of you who are watching this were alive for. Now this is smart to utilize those technicalities to really kind of get you to believe and remind yourself that you're one of the biggest clubs when you are a big club, you are a massive club, but you don't compare to a lot of those recently successful clubs. 
like for example the Panthers, like for example the Storm, like for example I guess the Roosters too, and the Broncos. With this being said though, you have been competing. I'm not saying that you've been awful. However, when I was growing up, like when I was a young lad, early 2000s, late 90s, you were dreadful. Like you were kind of like the Tigers of this generation. That's how bad the Rabbitohs were. I remember growing up and this team being like the joke of the league. But now they're kind of back to competing, but then they missed the eight again this year. I think that this is one of the biggest con clubs that we've seen. I will put them at the top of this. I will put them at the top of they get by. Now this might be controversial and you may not like it, but in my opinion, it's a reality. So go and comment below if you disagree with me, if you think that I'm full of shit, but explain to me why I'm full of shit. Explain to me. Just because you compete and are involved doesn't necessarily mean the right things are being done. Right, I'm, and, and you had Wayne Bennett. That was a really good stint for the club. But I don't know, man. I think they've just done a really good marketing job on the fans. St. George of the Royal Dragons obviously won a premiership about 15 odd years ago now, 14 years ago to the day. Maybe not to the day, but to the year. Uh, the Dragons now, right this very second, uh, there. Uh, right this very second of there. I would say... I don't think that after winning a premiership 14 years ago, you could put him here. But I want to put him here. I'm going to put him here. And this, yeah, people are going to people are going to complain about this. But I'm going to put him at the bottom of Struggle Street. I think Dragons fans will want to see them higher. But I also will tell you, Dragons fans, you're complaining a lot about your organisation. You're complaining a lot about them, and I agree with you. I think they couldn't organise a drill raffle. Actually, you know what? This is this is my list. I'm going to put him here. Ah. Oh. The, the eels are definitely blown. I'm just trying to figure out, should I? Because they did win a premiership 14 years ago. It's a recency bias. I'll put them. They're in massive struggle street now. But because they won that premiership 14 years ago, I'll put them there. But also as a merger, they they just they kind of collide with each other a lot. They collide with each other and overall their fans are like pitchforks ready for this club right now in regards to their organisation. Two more to go here and we do have the Sydney Roosters. Sydney Roosters. They are at the top of the elite. And I think we all know why. Uh, they know how to run a business. They know how to run this team. They are absolutely elite in regards to competing regardless of talent. Competing, regardless of injuries. Trent Robinson knows what he's doing. Club will back him into the end of days. And Nick Politis. That guy will be able to sell you a $10 ice cream that already is melted on the floor. Right? And he'll make you believe like you're getting the, the, the positive end of the stick there. And the ice cream may be on the floor, but the taste is still there. So if you're thirsty, then you can also have a bit of a drink. See? You twist the words. Make them believe like it's worthwhile. Right, and that's what Nick Pilates will do to you. You know, he'll sign a player on a $300,000 contract, but hey, whoa, there's a yacht in my yard. Holy damn. All right, last team here, West Tigers, you can go here. <laughs> to be completely fair with you, you have to put them here because they've actually changed the organization. They've actually just gotten rid of Pasco and Lee had to pay tell us, so currently this new organization has not yet been seen. I will, for the sake of the video though, put them here and they did win the, 20, the 2005 premiership, so I'll put them above Parramatta. But yeah, if we're looking outside of, if we're looking based off of like seasons completed, like the, the news about the Tigers only happened a couple of weeks ago. So throughout the 2023 season, we can still go off the fact that they couldn't organize a truck raffle. And there's no proof as well to say they've made the right decision, wrong decision and whatnot just yet, even though anything is the right decision when it means getting rid of how to pay tell us. So I'll put them in, couldn't organize a truck raffle, but are definitely above the team. That is 39 years that premiership cheated for two wooden spoons and back to back mind you and uh have only recently become com very competitive until very very recently when they haven't so i'm okay with this list i think that the most controversial one will be the old south sydney rabbitos there people won't maybe not understand what i'm saying there um but like a lot of people will just put them into quality anyway whatever you want to put them alongside manly then put them alongside manly but for me they're they're in the top of they get by the top four there are definitely the elite um I think that even the, though the Broncos won the wooden spoon a few years ago, 
you can definitely make the argument that they're still elite, um, especially with the way they've been able to turn the club around. 2015, grand final, 2020, wooden spoon, 2023, grand final, right? So, although they choke, the fact is they're still in the elite category. But, all right, guys, I'm going to jump off here for now. Like I said, comment below in the comment section your thoughts. Am I Muppet? Are you a Muppet? Are we all Muppets? Maybe. Uh, but tell me why you agree, disagree. Surprise, there's only one team of quality there for mine, though to be honest with you. A lot of teams are in droughts right now. A lot of teams are in droughts right now, so it does actually kind of make sense. I appreciate you guys as usual. Hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe when you're around here. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.